I wonder why there's so many hog names in the books. Like Hogwarts and Hogsmeade and Hogshead Inn. <laughs> Hi, Juliana. Oh, what's that? You already have all the answers? Ugh, great. Bye. Mm hmm. Mumbling, mumbling. Checking email. <gasps> No way! Hello Potterheads! I am so excited to share with you guys today something that I, along with the help of my incredible research contributor Juliana, possibly discovered about why there are so many hog names in the books, and maybe even discovered what Neville's Patronus might be? As you just saw in that riveting documentary opening, the other day I was wondering why there are so many hog names in the books, especially in this one small area of the UK. So I did a quick search online and I found this article from 2007, and so basically someone else already did all the research for me. No, I'm kidding. Not all of the research, and especially not all the connections, but it was a good basis. But thankfully, no one has really made a video on it. So a lot of this information that I'm going to present now is sourced from that article, so I mean credit where credit is due. So officially, the way that J.K. Rowling named Hogwarts is that she remembered it from the name of a flower she saw once, but then she forgot about the flower but remembered the name, so that's that. Wah, wah. So I mean, not exciting, but <laughs> not in reality, but within the HP universe, why are there so many hog names in this one place? Well, Alfonso Cuaron talked once about a conversation he had with J.K. Rowling during the making of Prisoner of Azkaban, where she mentioned that the school was built on an ancient Celtic site. Now this makes sense, as we know that the school is in Scotland, and interestingly enough, the word hog might be Celtic in origin. And if you look at the words mead and warts, we get even more cool information. Now, the people in these regions from long, long, long time ago were really into practical names that basically just described what the region is. So mead is really just a poetic and kind of old English way of saying meadow. And so hogs mead might have just been built in a meadow that was full of hogs. Wart is a bit more difficult and in a really roundabout way it comes from the ancient Greek word herma which means rock or hill. So hogs mead is hog meadow and hogwarts is hog hill. But how do we know that hogs would have actually been in the area? Well, like Guaron said, the school was built on an ancient Celtic site and hogs were actually of particular importance to Celtic people. Celts believed that hogs arrived in Britain from the other world via fairies. Scottish Celts even refused to eat pork until the 1800s. Additionally, there's a Celtic legend of the hero Diarmid and the founding of Scotland, and it's kind of super complicated, so I won't go into a lot of detail, but there's a lot of really important stuff surrounding hogs slash boars, and a lot of other stuff that's actually included in the Potter series, like an invisibility cloak, a scar on someone's forehead, a prophecy foretelling death, all that to say that the clan Campbell historically one of the largest clans in Scotland, claims descent from the hero Diarmid. This is important because the clan Campbell's crest and shield and coat of arms and a lot of other stuff is adorned by the head of a wild boar. And the lands owned historically by the clan are in Argyllshire, Scotland. And the only painting in all of Hogwarts that includes a reference to any single place in the United Kingdom is the painting in which the Fat Lady hides in Book 3 after being attacked by Sirius Black, which is a map of Argyllshire, Scotland. <laughs> So that's probably where Hogwarts is, roughly, and why there are so many hog names in the area. There's some other tangential stuff like 987 was the Chinese year of the pig, and that's roughly when the school may have been founded. And, oh, and also in Celtic mythology, and, and also in the real world, hogs have a reputation of being immune to snake bites and not hesitating to destroy snakes. <gasps> Hi, Juliana. What's that? You already have all the answers again? Great, thanks. Close laptop, look at camera. You guys, what if Neville's Patronus is a wild boar? Okay, hear me out, but I think we've figured this one out. So first, just to get out of the way, yes, I am aware that Pottermore and J.K. Rowling say that Neville was never able to produce a corporeal Patronus. More, I'm just arguing what his full-bodied Patronus would have been. Additionally, I first thought that there must have been some weird contradiction going on somewhere because it is a requirement to become an Auror that you need to be able to cast a full body Patronus. And Neville does work as an Auror for a short time before becoming the Herbology Professor at Hogwarts. But after the Second Wizarding War, Kingsley Shacklebolt kind of relaxed the requirements to become an Auror and basically said anyone who fought in the Battle of Hogwarts 
Uh, you're qualified, just because that was enough bravery and courage and skill to show that you kind of could be an aura. So all of that out of the way, I think Neville's Patronus would be a wild boar if he could cast one. So first, let's look at some descriptions of wild boars. Wild boars are said to be surprisingly shy and generally avoid humans, but they're formidable if cornered and in many cultures symbolize courage and ferocity. A boar challenges its opponent with its posture and refuses to engage in violence at all costs unless absolutely necessary. I mean, that's Neville in a nutshell. On top of that, this description of a boar Patronus makes even more sense. Casters of a boar Patronus want others to respect Respect their personal space, are skittish when approached, and are wary of letting others into their inner circle. Do I really need to keep going? Okay, more than just secondhand questions, it gets even more interesting when you look into the etymology of the Longbottom name. The name is believed to have originated as a place name, a practical name, which was typical of the area. And Longbottom may have originated from Luddenden Foot near Halifax. For anyone who isn't from the UK, we're talking like Northern England, above Liverpool and Manchester. This would make sense, and it would make sense for Neville's family to probably live around here. We know that wizard families don't really bounce around a lot, and it's not very far from Blackpool, just about over an hour's drive, which is where Neville was once dropped off of a pier to see whether or not he was a squib. So conceivably, his family could live in the rough area and may have been on holiday in Blackpool. The most interesting part of all of this name business is that about equidistant between London Foot and Blackpool is an area known as the Forest of Boland, which has been designated as an area of outstanding natural beauty in the UK. Now, we know Neville and his uncle have a great affinity for herbology, so maybe the family's been involved in keeping this area beautiful for a long time. Maybe that's why the forest became so beautiful. But what's even more convincing is that within this forest is a wild boar park. It just keeps happening. <laughs> Last thing. Neville really comes into his own during his fifth year at Hogwarts. It's when he joins the DA, it's when he really gets closer with a group of friends, and it's when we get to learn about him some more, when we see him in St. Mungo's. And at the end of that year, he finally ends up getting his own wand instead of having to use his father's. And the cool thing is that his fifth year started in 1995, and on the Chinese Zodiac calendar, 1995 is the year of the pig. So there you wait. Hi, Juliana. Yeah. You guys, I totally forgot. 987, which could be a year that Hogwarts was founded, was also the year of the pig! Okay, so in 1992, we hear Professor Binns say that the school was founded over 1,000 years ago. That would be 992 or before. 987 came before 992. Professor Binns, we don't know when he died, so it could have been long enough ago that he knows the year the school was founded but just forgot. Also, the Hogwarts gates are flanked by two statues of wild boars with wings. All that connection to the school's founders and the location and everything. I mean, I don't know guys, but it just kind of seems like even more support for the idea that Neville was supposed to be the one that the prophecy was foretelling. And the only reason he wasn't the chosen one is because he wasn't the one that Voldemort chose. After all, in the fifth book, it's Neville who accidentally smashes the prophecy. <gasps> Wait, no, I'm done. Okay guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. I know I just dumped a ton of info on you, but like, I'm kind of a big fan of this theory. Thank you so much to my friend Juliana for helping me with all of the research on this one. I would not have been able to make all of these connections, nor find all of this information without her research skills and her enthusiasm. So thank you so much, Juliana. You guys can always find her in the comments below, leaving the most thoughtful and well-researched comments that often end up proving me wrong. And you guys, I just want to take this quick opportunity, if you've stuck around until now, just to ask that you please, please, please consider checking out my Patreon or my merch store. For Patreon supporters, I have some benefits over there that I think you guys will really like, like uh, scripts for book club episodes the day before the episode comes out, personalized thank you videos, shoutouts and comments, uh, and more stuff. And I just revamped my merchandise to be higher quality and better items. Full disclosure, I ordered one of my first run shirts, and when I got it, I was severely disappointed in the quality of it. Uh, so I redid everything, chose better items, and hopefully it's better for you now. Here are some examples of my merchandise on the screen now. If you guys like anything that you see, please, please, please consider buying something. Uh, the support will really help me be able to continue to improve the quality of my videos. Here's some videos that YouTube thinks you will like. Thank you guys so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and sharing as always. And don't let the depression spiders get you down. Bye!